okay, so you're ready to start funding your accounts. What accounts do you fund? So the understanding the rules that go along with a lot of these accounts and investing in them is important. So for beginners, it's really hard to navigate all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about these five accounts. I'm going to talk about TFSA, RSP, RESP, uh, first time home buyers, and a cash account. So these are some accounts that I've recommended in other videos to open. These are the accounts I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about them at a beginner level. So you have the basic understanding of the rules of investing in these accounts. Because uh, there are rules to investing in these accounts. So there's a contribution limits, there's things like that, withdrawal limits, uh, withdrawal penalties. You need to understand all these rules before you start funding them because your goals on what you're trying to achieve will actually dictate which accounts you're going to start funding. So we're basically going to walk through these accounts. I'm going to give you a high level view of it, basic information on it, and basic rules for these investing accounts. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. We're going to start off with a TFSA. TFSA. So a TFSA, a tax-free savings account. So basically what it is, it says the name says, it's a savings account. It has some rules though. The, so CRA, Revenue Canada, has set out limitations on what you can actually put into the account each year as of 2009. This does carry over. So any unused contributions from the year before move into this year and you can add to that contribution room. So, but you need to check your CRA website and under my accounts and see what your contribution room is and what your limits are. Because the other thing is that you don't want to over contribute. Over contributing into your TFSA will result in penalties. Um, those penalties, I think, are about 1% per uh, whatever day, month, whatever it is, uh, until you withdraw that over contribution. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're knowing where you are with your contribution limits. The second thing is a TFSA cannot be used as a trading account. So in other words, you cannot make frequent trades in it. You can't be buying and selling in a TFSA. If you do buy and sell a lot in a TFSA, it could be deemed as a business account and you could be they can claim you're using it for business purposes. And then what they'll do is they'll charge you business tax on it. You'll be charged on the profits that you make on each item and each sale and you'll be charged at a business rate. So you don't want to do that with your TFSA. A TFSA is a long-term savings account. The thing, the other thing about a TFSA is the withdrawal limits. So if you take money out of your TFSA this year, you do not gain that room back to contribute till the following calendar year. So what I do is when I'm doing stuff with my TFSA and I need to take money out of it to either put it somewhere else or do something, I do it at the end of the year. So in December, beginning of December, I move any money out of my TFSA that I need to. So that way, as of January, I get that room back automatically. So that way, I'm not waiting a long time in between when I need to refund the account or if I need to move money around. So those are some of the basic rules of a TFSA account. Hopefully, these help you understand and why you should be trading with them. There's one other rule with the TFSA account that I forgot is that with a TFSA account, any dividends that are paid from a U.S. stock you own in that account will be charged a 15% withholding tax on the dividends. Um, if it's a small dividend stock, I wouldn't worry about it. But if it's a large dividend stock that you have in your TFSA, you will be pulling, paying a 15% withholding tax um, on any stocks within a TFSA. Okay, so hope that helps you out understanding a TFSA and a little bit of the rules that are involved in investing in a TFSA account. Okay, so we're going to move on to an RRSP uh, account, and we'll talk about some of the rules there. RRSP. So an RRSP, Register Retirement Savings Plan. So there's a few rules that go along with RRSP and contributing to an RRSP that you need to know about. One, CRA sets the limits on how much you can contribute year and over your life. This does accumulate what you haven't used in the past you still have the opportunity to use in the future. So you want to go into the CRA website to make sure you know where you are and what your limits are with contributing to an RSP. The other thing with an RSP, it's deferred taxes. Another means you don't pay tax right now, you're going to pay later when you withdraw. So that means that Revenue Canada will give you back the money you paid on taxes for that portion you put in there. So again, that could give you more money to invest. That's another bonus way that people look at it, is it has more money that you can invest again. So that's the things about an RSP. So those are some of them. The other rules that you got to keep in mind are withdrawal limits. So when, when you withdraw money out of an RSP, if you draw prior to retirement, two things. One, you pay tax on it at the marginal tax rate at the time. So that's whatever your tax rate is at that time. 
you're going to pay tax on that. It counts as income. The other thing that's very important is that when you withdraw money out of an RSP, that contribution room is gone forever. You do not get it back. If you take money out of an RSP, that room is gone. So you do not get it back. This is really important. I repeated it twice because it, what it does is it decreases the volume that you can put in that account. So it's very important to keep in mind when you fund an RSP, the goal is to leave the money in the RSP. The goal should be to leave your money in any account you invest in. Um, unless you're investing for like a house or something like that, that account has a specific purpose. But a retirement fund, the money needs to stay there and grow. That's the point of it. Okay, so I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about RSPs and some of the rules and limits with them. Okay, so let's move on to an RESP. And we'll take a quick look at that one. RESP, Registered Education Savings Plan. So these things are great. They, they come with a bunch of grants. So the government gives you a little bit of money to help with the education. It's a percentage of what you put in up to a maximum. Uh, but you do have a limit on what you can contribute to these accounts. You're limited on 50000 per child beneficiary of these accounts. There are some rules if this funds are not used for education. So if for some reason all the funds aren't used in your child's education, there are rules on what you can do with it after. You can transfer to RSPs, but you have to pay back grant money, things like this. There are a lot of rules that are involved in this. So if you believe that you're not going to be using these funds for your child's education and re reaping the full benefits of it, you want to look a lot more into the rules on if you have to take money out of it because they're not going to let you keep the grant money and they are going to make, make you pay capital gains on profits you made in this account. So keep that in mind when you're funding one of these accounts, you want to make sure that your child's going to be using these funds for their education. Okay, so now we're going to move on to FHSA, First Time Home Buyer Savings Account. FHSA. First time home buyer savings account. So very similar to an RSP from the point that it has contribution limits. So you have a lifetime maximum limit of, I think it's about $40,000. You have a yearly limit that you're allowed to contribute, which I think is about $8,000 at this time. Um, but it also has a limit in its lifespan that you can have the account. From the day you open the account till the day you buy your first house, you have 15 years. So at the 15 year mark, you have to do something with the funds, whether it be move it into um, an RSP, if you have contribution room, if you don't, then you're gonna have to withdraw the funds. And if you withdraw the funds, you're gonna have to pay them at your marginal tax rate. So if there is significant funds in there, you could be taxed heavily for this as well. So these are some of the rules that go with that account. Um, again, there, there are a little more to them. Uh, there's more rules, but these are the basic rules you need to understand about this account when you start funding this account to make sure you're funding it for the right reasons. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to a cash account and we'll take a look at that. And Okay, so a cash account. Last account we're gonna talk about is a cash account. And it's the last account for a reason because it's the last account you wanna fund unless you're gonna be doing trading. So trading is different from investing. Trading are taxable events. When you're doing things like trading, you're actually not investing for the long run. You're, you're kind of doing like need to make money today, flip it, do this and do that. You're creating taxable events. If you did trading in an RSP or a TFSA, you create a taxable event. Cash accounts, you can do whatever you want. You can put as much money in as you want. You can take it out whenever you want. You can, you can do anything you want with these accounts, but you're gonna pay tax on them. That's what the account's for. My opinion is the last account you're going to use unless you're doing trading. And then it'll probably be the account you're going to use. That being said, you're looking for what is the first account that I should be invested in? It goes straight back to the list. First account we talked about, TFSA. If you have the self-control to use a TFSA and you start at the age of 20 and you can max out and meet that maximum contribution room and do not touch these funds until you are at the age of 65 or whenever you want to retire, at just an index fund, 10% S&P 500, you're gonna be have well over $5 million in your account by the time you're 65. And that's just reaching that limit. Us being humans, us having human nature, people always tend to wanna to draw on these funds at some point. You may wanna consider an RSP. An RSP will give you penalties for when you withdraw it. They're going to make you think twice about taking this money out. If you take money out of an RSP, that room is gone forever, right? So that may be something to consider as well. But if you don't know where to start, 
the first account you're going to want to invest in, TFSA. Benefits can be you can withdraw the money from the TFSA, then you can put the money in an RSP. You can withdraw the money from a TFSA and put it into whatever you want. That's the advantages of a TSA, TFSA, and there's no penalties for the withdrawal. You just have to remember that you cannot recontribute that money till the following year. Hope this video helped you out. Hope you uh, gives you a better idea and better understanding on where to start with your investments. Um, please look forward to more of my videos. I'm doing these videos just trying to give everybody some basic understanding of investment and let everybody know this really isn't that hard to do it yourself and you can save yourself a ton of fees in the long run by doing it and increase your wealth dramatically over time. Okay, look for, look for more of my videos coming soon and hopefully these helped you out.